This review is made possible by Toyota of Naperville. Toyota of Naperville is the largest Toyota dealer in Illinois with hundreds of new and used vehicles in their inventory. Visit www.toyotaofnaperville.com or in person at 1488 West Ogden Avenue in Naperville, Illinois. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2019 Toyota Land Cruiser. Up front is a 5.7 liter V8 and down below is an eight speed automatic transmission. And if you're anything like me, well, first of all, I'm sorry if you're anything like me, but if you are like me, then you will be thinking, they still make Land Cruisers? And actually, Land Cruiser is the oldest name Toyota has in its book. It actually predates the Corolla and Camry by quite some time. The Corolla predates by almost 12 years. But the Land Cruiser wasn't always this sort of luxury SUV. It used to be a rough and tumble Jeep competitor. And so today we're gonna to be taking a look at the 2019, the luxury version, the modern equivalent. And we're also gonna look at why Toyota hasn't really sold any of these. But let's get back to that 5.7 liter V8. It's the same V8 you'll find in the Tundra. It does work 381 horsepower, 401 pound feet of torque, getting you a whopping 13 miles per gallon city, 18 on the highway. Not the best, but we are out on the test track, so let's give it a little go. It gets up and goes, but it's definitely a, a, a lot more lumbering of going than, you know, other V8 vehicles. This is a heavy giant car. Like I said, paired to it is an automatic transmission. It's fine. It's an eight speed. However, it is shifted with the jigsaw shifter that I really dislike. Um, and we'll talk about that later on when we talk about the interior. Last but not least, of course, the Land Cruiser is four wheel drive and we have a lot of options that go with that. So we'll talk about that with the interior as well. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of gauges. On the left, I have my water temperature and tachometer. And on the right, I have my speedometer, battery voltage, and fuel. As well as in the center, I get the pretty typical Toyota gauge. Right now, I am looking at my miles per hour in digits, but I can go over to look at which way my wheels are pointing very nice feature i wish the tacoma has it but it does not tire pressure per wheel oil maintenance mileage we can go to the right and look at a compass we can go to the right again look at my music information alerts settings we can look at the speed i have a sway warning this is interesting i've never seen it in a car and i'm gonna have to do some research on this i was unaware of what this was at the time of filming so here's what it is all right, so after some research, this is what the sway warning is. Again, like I said, I had no idea what it was. Basically, the car will track how many times you go over a line on the road without signaling or if your steering is swaying, if your response times are slow. Basically, the cup of coffee means that you need to wake up. You're not driving at your best. And so the car kind of actually keeps track of that and will tell you, hey, you might need a rest. You might want to pull over. You seem a little tired. You're not driving your best, etc. I do have a blank screen as well. I have current MPG, average speed, eco indicator, and then we're back to my speed and digits. That is nice. That is nice features in the gauge cluster. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my options for the center screen and voice commands. And on the right, I have the controls for the screen and the gauges, as well as lane keep assist and pre-collision warning. To the left of me, we have a lot of buttons. This whole car actually has a lot of buttons. Auto folding mirrors, auto headlights, my mirror adjusters, parking sensors on and off, and my favorite, headlight washers. This car does have headlight washers here in 2019. I feel like it's sort of a gimmicky thing, but this is a big deal overseas. A lot of cars overseas, Europe, Asia, India, the Middle East, they have headlight washers. And that makes sense, and I'll talk about that later. On the door, I do have lock and unlock power windows, which are all auto, as told by the label down at the bottom. And then I have three different memory seat options, which is really, really great. To the right of the steering wheel, I do get a view button. So this will offer up a couple different cameras around the vehicle to give you a better perspective. This is absolutely awesome. I think all cars should have this, but it's especially important on a vehicle this size. 
Down below that we have collision warning on and off, power door off, and our tailgate button, and a dead switch. In an $88,000 car there's a dead switch. In the center, I do have a giant touch screen and I like the infotainment system. I think it's easy to read, it's decently modern. However, what it is missing is Apple CarPlay. And I know Toyota has been fighting Apple CarPlay for a very long time. It does have Toyota's whatever system, I don't even know the name, Entune App Suite. <sighs> this doesn't work. You have to download a separate app on your phone and it's annoying. So Toyota has been switching their fleet over. A lot of their new 2020s do have Apple CarPlay, but this does not. This 2019 does not. Down below that, I do have some readouts just for the climate control and time, and then the actual climate control itself. Additionally, I do have the controls for the radio down below, a little cubby hole. And then down at the bottom, we have our heated and cooled seat options, which you can even put your seat into auto, which is very, very nice. That, that is very cool and interesting. The fact that you can actually put your seat in auto, it will decide how warm or cold your butt should be. To the right of that, I have my four high, four low switch, my crawl mode, so I can actually set this thing to crawl, turn assist function, my drive modes, and then down at the bottom, we have ECT power, ECT second, traction control off, and locking the center diff. These are really, really nice off-road settings. If you are going to drive off-road, these are great. And again, I'll talk about why that's really, really amazing at the end of the video. I do get two cup holders, then I have a center console. I normally breeze over the center consoles because normally there's a USB cord in there and that's it. However, here in the Land Cruiser, it does not. And I don't know of any modern car that has this. I know the Dodge Caliber SRT4 had it and the Toyota Crowns of the early 90s had it. But when you open up the center console, there is a button that says cool box power. And what it does is it actually turns on the air conditioning and pumps it into that box. So you can put drinks in there or anything you wanna keep cool on a journey, keep it in there and it will stay cool. That is really, really cool, no pun intended. It's a really cool feature. And that's the sort of luxury I was expecting from a vehicle like this. The seats are nice and comfortable. Like I said, heated, cooled, memory, power, all of that stuff, which, creates a very, very pleasant driving experience. Now we will talk about the back seats and hatch, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we are in the back of the 2019 Toyota Land Cruiser, and I am thoroughly impressed. First of all, I have a screen behind either seat. I believe this is the first car I've ever reviewed to have screens in the back from the factory. Super nice feature, I do have an HDMI in at the bottom as well. I have high and low heated seats. I have my own fan controls, volume, and I do have headphones, say Toyota on them, um, for these rear screens. So on road trips or something, I won't be bothering the front occupants. There is a third row that folds down as well, and we'll take a look at the back in a little bit. But I like the leather. It feels nice, perforated leather, obviously auto power windows, speakers in the door. Overall, this is a really nice experience back here, and I can actually tilt these screens, which is super, super cool. Bet you didn't know it opened like that. And then we have a little handle here. We actually do get a tailgate on the Land Cruiser. Very, very cool, I was unaware of that. Tons and tons of cargo room back here. I mean, really great, great amount of space. I do have a power outlet, things like that. I mean, really, this is just, this is great. I mean, it, it really is good. Power top tailgate as well. Kind of looks like the car's eating, like it's a mouth. I think this actually looks pretty good. It's sort of an understated SUV. You don't really quite know what it is. You assume it's a Highlander or something like that, but it is a Land Cruiser. I think it looks great. I think it has a very wide presence on the road. And overall, I'm very happy with the styling. Now, let's talk about why off-roading matters, why the headlight washers are an overseas feature and why that makes sense. Last year, so 2019, the year this car was built, Toyota here in America sold 3,536 Land Cruisers, under 4,000 units, 
which is a pretty low number. And so I beg to question, why do they still make this? Obviously, there's not a huge market for it. And I can't imagine that their profit margins on one of these is amazingly big. So why still produce this? Well, the rest of the world. This truck, this SUV, whatever you want to call it, is very popular in Australia and very popular in the Middle East. That's very evident by the sticker in the center console. I've never seen a sticker in a car that's not English, Spanish, or the occasional French. I've never seen that in a car sold here, but this is a global car. Hey, me again, backseat Zach. Um, so I just mentioned that there is the interesting sticker in the center that has another language on it. I'm looking in the back here, it says third row seat. It's also in Russian. There is a sticker in Russian. Again, haven't seen that. There's so many different languages written on this car. It really, really beats the point to the fact that this is a global car. This is not just an American USDM car. They happen to import them here. Those off-road options get used in the Middle East and in Australia. Out in the outback, there are very few roads and Australians love their land cruisers. In the Middle East, there's a lot of desert, a lot of off-road terrain. Here in the Chicagoland area, I see a pile of gravel at a construction site off in front of me, but that's, that's it. And I'm not gonna be driving on that. There's no need for off-road features like this in a luxury SUV. However, other luxury SUVs here in America don't have these features, which is what I hypothesize the reason other SUVs don't sell as well in other countries is because they don't have off-road features. And so this is a very global car. I'm driving it here in Illinois, in America, but a majority of Land Cruiser owners are thousands and thousands of miles away from this little test track I'm driving on right now. My final thoughts on the Land Cruiser, and my final issue with it really, is the price tag. This particular Land Cruiser 2019 is $88,000. We're looking at taxes and fees, puts this vehicle above $90,000. And for me, I just feel like it doesn't quite hit the mark with other $90,000 vehicles. It's not quite as plush or comfortable. It doesn't have the features. It doesn't even have Apple CarPlay. A 2020 Chevy Spark is $14,000. It's the cheapest car you can buy and has Apple CarPlay standard. The Kia Rio, $17,000 standard Apple CarPlay. The Toyota Land Cruiser, $88,000. No Apple CarPlay. Now I get the fact that I'm making a big deal about Apple CarPlay. Yes, you can plug in your Bluetooth device. Yes, you can still listen to your music, get your calls, it's fine. But the fact that it doesn't have Apple CarPlay tells a bigger story to me in the fact that Toyota hasn't really cared about this vehicle for the last couple of years. They just make them and put them out. It doesn't have the top of the line features. Apple CarPlay or not, if a company came out tomorrow and made a new audio system called Z-Play, let's just say, and all the cars started adapting and offering this new feature, I'm sure BMW would be one of the first to jump on it to get Z-Play into their cars. I'm sure Mercedes would quite follow. And then in a couple years, five, 10 years, every single car, every base model car would have Z-Play. That's the natural flow of technology. This at $88,000 should be on the cusp of technology. It should be the forefront. When Apple CarPlay came out, it should have been one of the first cars to have it. And yet so many years after Apple CarPlay has existed, it still doesn't have it. It's a shame. Again, I'm not complaining strictly about Apple CarPlay. I'm complaining about the fact that Toyota hasn't put a modern technology into their car that so many other cars have. And so I would love for the Land Cruiser to go back to its original form of a rugged kick in the chest vehicle. I also think the Land Cruiser name carries a lot more weight across the world because here we had the Jeep, but Jeep wasn't really a super global name all the time. Land Cruiser was. Here, this is just kind of an overlooked SUV, honestly. And I can't say I blame people for overlooking it. 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville for letting me take out their 2019 Toyota Land Cruisers. If Toyotas are not your thing, they have a giant used car selection. I would highly recommend browsing through their website. They have Audis, Subarus, Mazdas, anything you want. They will find a car that will fit your needs. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe. Really like to take care, guys.